Hey, welcome back, guys, to another intriguing and exciting episode of the Pocket Change Market Report for the week of April 11, 2020. Uh, hope everyone's doing really well and you guys are finding some pretty cool errors and varieties, stuff that really makes uh, the heart pump with excitement because if you found something pretty neat in your change, more than likely uh, there is going to be some sort of value. Uh, that follows it pretty closely. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. Believe it or not, within the last 24 hours, I've found 20 really awesome pieces that people have found through bankroll searching or pocket change searching, and they are cashing in in a big way with some of these uh, listings on eBay. Now, if this is your first time joining up on one of these pocket change market reports by my by me, um, I want you guys to keep in mind every single coin on the list in one shape or fashion is going to be raw, ungraded, and it's going to be about as um, you know good as as it's going to get in terms of the images, all provided by each one of the respective sellers of the coins. Some good, some bad, but you're going to see as I progress through this list that taking quality images of your coins so people know what to look for in terms of errors and varieties is going to make a huge difference whether or not you get some bids on your auctions. So, we're going to go ahead and kick it off, but before I do, i got to go ahead and do the good old YouTube thing, and that is like Share the video if your heart's content, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you enjoy coins and the hobby, then you'll love my videos. I've been around the biz on YouTube for 12 years, so I would say I know a thing or two because I know a thing or two, uh, but in any event, we have a really nice market going right now in spite of everything going on. People are still spending money on these coins, so it's going to be a huge, genuine opportunity if you guys need a few bucks to pay a bill or do whatever you need to do with your money, I'm happy to say that there are coins that people are buying, okay? People are opening opening up their wallets. So the market is definitely healthy, and it is looking for more of your coins if you're looking to sell, all right? So good news there. So the first coin that we're going to go ahead and take a look at, and again, every single listing is within the last 24 hours, so we have a 1987 Lincoln Memorial Penny. Okay, this particular coin, as you can tell, is a little bit off-center. It's nothing substantial, but this is a coin that, you know, on occasion pops up in these bank rolls or, you know, some other method of finding coins, piggy bank, searching. Uh, just don't tell your kids. Uh, but this coin right here is a uh, uncertified, kind of like raw VF, extremely fine Example, uh, it's off center by about like three, four percent. You know, not, it's not a screamer, that's for sure. But guess what, guys? This one sold for sixteen dollars and seventy-five cents. And just to let you guys know, when I discuss pricing, okay, how much these sold for, generally it's going to incorporate shipping fees as well. So shipping might be like two or three bucks. Keep that in mind. So that's the nineteen eighty-seven Lincoln Memorial cent that you see here. All right, so the next one that I have here, believe it or not, this is a very kind of low-key type coin. I mean, it's a really nice condition. 1958 Lincoln Wheat Cent. Um, just by looking at the coin, it looks to be in pretty good shape, okay? Uh, it's a mid-state, full red example, you know, probably a 64 or 65 on the numerical grading scale. But this one right here is hiding a little secret because the coin sold for $15.90, so there's got to be some stimulating concrete evidence as to why it com commanded nearly $16, and it's right here. So, anyways, right here on the bottom part of Lincoln's bust, we have a few die cracks that are very prominent in the jacket region, but if you also look at the right-hand side picture, you have a bunch of little die cracks and chips in the scalp hair area of Lincoln. All right, now, someone did pay $16 for this. Someone bid it up. It was actually a traditional auction format, so I was kind of taken aback that this one even garnered so many bids up to $16 because die cracks and chips are pretty common. But here 
is a huge key in all of this. You take great photos, you tell the story, okay? People are going to be bought in by the high quality images that you portray on your listings and then you'll get all the money, all right? So die cracks and chips, while minor, they are still a pretty neat um, die state, all right? These dies, they wear down over time and it shows on these coins. All right, so the next one that we have here is one of my favorites. I've owned and found a few of these and there are plenty of them out there. It's the 1972 Lincoln Memorial set, only this one is a known cherry picker's guide variety. It's a doubled die obverse. As you guys know for 72, there's about a dozen really nice doubled dies um, that can be found, all right? This is die number eight. As you can see, the coin on the left-hand side is in the little two-by-two two holder. It's in phenomenal shape, okay? It's a really nice high grade example. So one of the big uh, attributions about this doubled die is going to be the date. Okay, you can actually see the doubling, the notching right here. You can see the double tail here on the nine. You can see the line with the secondary seven and same with the two. There's a pair of twos right there, just kind of mishmashing into each other. All right, but a lot more of the stronger doubling is gonna show on Liberty and the motto, In God We Trust. Okay, so when you take a look at these coins, the 72s, a lot of the strong doubling is going to show on Liberty and the motto. All right, so keep that in mind as you're going through these. This particular coin sold as a best offer of $98.95, proving once again that these coins, even though it's not double die obverse number one or four, which are the two most rarest out of the dozen or so, you, know, you find one that's a really nice shape of any one of the other die types, and you're going to have a coin that is going to be collectible and wanted and coveted within the uh, coin collector uh, base, and it's right good size. There's a lot of us out there that want coins of high quality. All right, so the next one that we have here is a 1945P, okay? So this is a silver war nickel. It's a manganese silver alloy. Um, the one thing you got to keep in mind with these uh, wartime silver nickels is that they have a lot of annealing issues, much like some of the um, earlier years of the buffalo nickel. Okay, that's why you see a bunch of like laminations and those type of errors. But for this particular series from 42 to 45 where they had this different composition you had a lot of uh, improperly annealed planchets you had a bunch of laminations this one had a big old lamination that had fallen off at some point uh, but this is a really nice example so for you know all the hard work of taking pictures and all that the pictures are not great on this one by the way especially on the offers uh, you have this yellow background and it's way out of focus but the reverse um, it tells the story, all right? You want to be able to tell the story. This one sold for $11.50. So it seems like there could have been a lot more room, but, you know, you can get a $10 bill out of this. That's fine by me. All right, so the next one we have here is one that I'm sure a lot of us have come across. And believe it or not, it, believe it or not there is still a secondary market for these, what they call, quote-unquote, poor man's double dies, which is simply die deterioration. Okay, so here's the full obverse of the coin. If you look here on the right, you can see this secondary kind of phantom image of another five. It's just like a thicker bottom tail of the second five, and that is what they deem the poor man's double die. So this one grades at about XF, not, nothing high end, but the coin did sell for $16.05. Okay, a coin that traditionally is worth about a nickel. <laughs> uh, because that's just the type of coin it is. But there is kind of this cult following, so to speak, for these poor man's double dies. All right. So the next one that we have here, you could blink and totally miss the error that's on this Colorado State quarter. So it's a 2006 Philadelphia, so it's got a P-Mint mark. But if you look at the 3 o'clock position on the reverse, it's got a really nice sized cut or die break. Um, this one right here is a nice, kind of, I guess, kind of like about uncirculated. It's seen its day in commerce. You got a bunch of little scratches and stuff on the highest points of the coin. But this one here sold for $12.99. Okay, pretty nice find. Made yourself enough to buy lunch. 
pretty cool. All right, so the next one that we have here, this one's really cool. All right, so this is a 1988 $1 Federal Reserve note. The error on this, as you can tell, looks like it's got an image of the front and back of the note on one note. What this is called is a uh, front to back 100% wet ink transfer error. So as the sheets are being stacked up after being printed, okay, you have the wet ink settling in on the other subject sheets, and then you have some of that transfer that rubs off from one note to the other. All right, and this is what they call a full 100% offset because you have the entire obverse design on the reverse. All right, so hopefully that helps out you guys there who are into currency. So this one is what the seller calls a choice about uncirculated note. That's for paper speak in grading terms. This one sold for $231, okay? Quite a bit of money, but you guys didn't know that these things sell for that kind of money, but they do, all right? And this one brought home, brought home all the cash. All right, speaking of bad pictures, this one held together just enough information uh, for buyers to actually bid up this coin. It's a 1960D large date Lincoln Memorial cent. Okay, if you look on the reverse, it has a really nice, nearly rim to rim, retained lamination. So it's almost like a crack, but you see a bunch of folds in the top layers of this particular coin. And uh, you have something that's really nice. This one sold for about nine for nine dollars and twenty cents, uh, but in any event, it's about a VF condition coin. Okay, not nothing high end, but you know if you found one and change, great. You may, just made yourself five to ten bucks. All right, so this one right here, I've talked about on a number of occasions, proving once again that these are a worthwhile find. This is a 1982 Philadelphia. Kennedy half dollar that is missing the FG initials right here next to the leg and tail area of this heraldic eagle. All right, this is a known cherry picker's guide variety. What it simply is, is it's an over polishing of that area where the initials are and it just disappeared. And that's why it's not there. This example sold for $7.96 here in the last 24 hours. All right, coming up next, uh, again, this is the subject coin for my thumbnail. If something is missing, it's going to be worth some money, okay? So this is a 1969D Lincoln Memorial set. This one has the dubious distinction of being in the Cherry Picker's Guide as one that has the missing initials on the reverse. Now, you might want to you know, use a little bit of caution with a 69D missing initials coin. Again... We're talking diabrasion, a overpolishing of the coin surfaces when the uh, mint employees, um, you know, fix up the dies and ready for another hundred thousand strikes. So this one right here, although it appears that the F and G are missing, has very slight remnants of the initials. Okay, some would say that that's not a true missing F G initials coin because you can see partial remnants. So you got to be careful when you're looking for stuff like this. Now, with all that being said, this coin right here, nothing high-end grade-wise. It's about AU Brown. This one sold for $14.09. Wow, crazy, huh? That um, this coin would command that kind of money. It doesn't even look that great, all right? Uh, but there you go. That's the 69D missing FG initials Lincoln Memorial. All right, so the next one that we have here, just kind of continuing on the theme of diabrated coins. This is another silver wartime nickel. It's a 1943 question mark. All right, for those of you that know where the mint mark is on these coins, it's usually right above this dome of Monticello. Guess what? There's nothing there, okay? More diabrated, overpolishing. Okay, it happens all the time. This particular coin sold for $22.38, where any other day, if there was a mint mark right here, this would be a coin that's worth about $1.80. <laughs> so, it, you know, um, $22 or $1.80, you got to make sure you check your coins for little kind of funny nuances like missing devices, like half a date missing or a mint mark missing or some of the mottos and all that stuff. 
you know, it's going to make a huge difference how much money you get because of a certain type of error. All right, so this one right here is a pretty innocuous kind of low-key type variety. It's a 1998 wide AM reverse Lincoln Memorial set. You can see a little bit of a gap here between the A and M in America. All right, so these were struck inadvertently with proof dies. Okay, so the proof die for 1998 in theory has quite a bit of gap here, whereas the normal business strike coins would have the A and M probably touching a little bit. All right, right at the base there. So if you found one with the proof reverse wide AM reverse, you have a coin that's worth a few bucks. This one right here in its current condition, which is like about uncirculated, sold for $10 here in the last day. All right, so here's another one of my favorites. This is the 2015 P Homestead America the Beautiful Quarter. There are a multitude of doubled die reverses. I'm to, when I mean multitude, I mean multiple, multiple tudes or something like that. But anyways, there's like over a hundred different double dies that involve this window pane here in the center. Now this one right here is Wexler's double die reverse number four. This is a best of series coin. You can see the double pump handle right here. This is a phenomenal variety. Okay, so this one right here, even though quite a few of them exist out in um, the market or in change, this one sold for $19.50, okay, which is nearly a $20 bill. That's not a bad return for something that is relatively plentiful. All right, so the next one that we have here, and again, using caution, this is a coin that looks like it was struck through Greece, which is a pretty easy mistake to cross up with a coin that was struck through a cap die. As you can uh, tell, the reverse looks perfectly fine, nice, solid, sharp strike, but the obverse looks like it's pretty weak, all right? So, but in this case, it affects the whole coin. You have a nice weak date, but you know it's a 1982, it's a large date, and it is a copper composition or a bronze composition coin, okay? Not the copper-coated zinc. All right, that um, follows up the uh, uh, the other years after this one. This particular coin right here, believe it or not, okay, cap die strikes, cap uh, strike throughs, are worth a lot of money. This one sold for seventy eight dollars and fifty cents. Keep that in mind. If you think you have a coin that looks like this, they are worth a lot of money. Okay, that's like three gas tank fulls in your car. All right, imagine the possibilities. All right, so we have up here next is a nice 1980 Philadelphia Washington Porter that obviously is off center by about 15 uh, percent. All right, which is pretty cool. Uh, this coin right here would be slightly larger than a standard Washington Porter because it's been elongated a, a touch. Uh, but this is a coin right here, nice, raw, pleasing, um, uh, kind of low end mint state, maybe a 62 or so. Uh, this one sold for $29.20. All right, we have a pretty solid market for these off-center coins, especially showing a full date. All right, so uh, we're at coin 16. And it's cool when you see a listing like this and people still find marquee varieties like this 2004D Wisconsin State Quarter with the high leaf variety. See this extra line engraved in here? Okay, that's not supposed to be there on any other regular struck 2004 Wisconsin quarter. But this one has that high extra leaf on there. Um, this one sold for a hundred bucks, clean. Uh, it's an AU condition coin, about uncirculated. And based off of the sale, this one came from San Antonio, Texas, where Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, that area, it was the initial drop zone for not only the high leaf, but the low leaf variant Wisconsin quarters. Pretty cool touch of knowledge. Maybe you guys don't know that, um, but these have been found all across the country. These things have distributed well over time. All right. The coin is 16 years old, so pretty nice find here and still very desirable. All right, so the next one that we have here is one that has gotten a lot of flack over the years, okay? Uh, this is the 2005 Philadelphia, Kansas uh, State Quarter, all right? So the one thing that 
seems to be found on these quite frequently are the coins with the abraded T in trust. All right, so it'll read, In God We Rust. Now, this particular example has kind of a weakened T. It's not completely missing compared to some other ones that I have found, but this is, again, another um, example of diabrasion and over-polishing. Um, you know, in some cases, it might even be a gob of grease, okay? Uh, but in this case, this is a coin that pops up pretty frequently on the secondary market like eBay and Facebook. Uh, this particular coin sold for $8.15, all right? And um, the reason why it's so controversial is that it's not as special enough to warrant the kind of money. But, it, you know, like the poor man's double die 1955, this is a coin that has endeared to some collectors over time. And people are still paying that five to ten dollar range for these so keep that in mind as you go through them all right what we have here is just a basic plain Jane 1975 Lincoln Memorial sign I just have an obverse image for you uh, but it's got a really sizable planchet clip right where the date is okay uh, it's right good size it's nothing super huge but it's there uh, a nice pleasing BU kind of like Mint State 63 full red example uh, this one sold for seven dollars and eighty nine cents how cool is this? Be sure to check your mint sets. You might find something that looks odd, like this one right here. This is a 1993 mint set, okay? So as you guys know, the mint sets um, generally have the Philadelphia and Denver minted coins packaged independently, all right? So the Philadelphias will have this bluish, bluish, whoops, bluish strip right here. Sorry, advance it, making you guys go blind with my video work. But it'll have this blue strip. But that's not the remarkable part. Check this out. A 93 nickel and quarter were packaged together in its own blister section. And it still came with a, another two or 1993 Philadelphia nickel. So it came with two nickels. But this is simply a packaging error from the U.S. Mint. Uh, so this particular listing also includes the Denver Mint. So you're getting a full set along with the error packaging of the 93p uh, this one right here sold for $49.98 which is about uh, about six times the standard going rate for a 1993 mint set so it's quite a bit more than market but as you can see uh, US mint packaging errors has its own separate uh, kind of like following as well and you know it's reflected in the amount of money for this sale and then the final coin on today's pocket change market report is going to be this Jim Dandy 1957D Lincoln Wheat Set that exhibits lots of machine doubling. Okay, I talked about the 69S, which by the way, if you haven't been keeping track on some of my videos, there have been two examples of a 69S with similar uh, machine doubling like this 57D that sold for $1,100 for one example, that's about a month ago. And then the same seller sold another example in a high grade fashion for $386.87, somewhere around there. Wow. Machine doubled coins, especially for coins that are known to have uh, the pretty big double dies like a 69S, um, it's hard to warrant that kind of money for machine doubling. But if you're looking to get back down to earth, here's a 57D. I have found a ton of these. And, uh, you know, the coin is worth a few bucks. This one is a nice XF. It's just an original coin that has seen a little bit of circulation. And this one sold for $9.50. Uh, kind of anticlimactic because, you know, in comparison to the 69S, it didn't sell for nearly, nearly as much. Uh, but it did sell for a lot more than what the traditional market value is. For a coin that is neither an error or variety. So, anyways, that's going to do it for the Pocket Change Market Report. Hopefully, it got your uh, uh, your mind stimulated a little bit if you're looking for, uh, you know, a few bucks here and there. And, uh, again, it's nothing you get rich off of. But if you need money for a tank of gas or you need to pay off, you know, pay a credit card bill or something like that, um, you could certainly utilize the coins that you find in your pocket to make it happen. Pretty cool, huh? So I want to thank everyone for watching. Again, like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell for instant notifications if this is your first time around. 
Uh, and as always, I am Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Coinaholics, guess what? We are discovering together. Would love to hear your success stories of your finds that you have come across here recently. And um, sales. If you got some pretty big sales you want to talk about, we'd love to hear them. So I want to thank you guys for your support. Have a great day. Happy hunting. And I'll see you on the next one. You guys take care.